Welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, January 31st, 2017. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Vincentians are being told to expect the unveiling of even greater plans and projects this year, which will aid in the further development and in enhancement of SVG's health care services and treatment. Contributing to the debate of the 2017 budget estimates in Parliament Monday, Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, Senator Luke Brown, outlined that some $85 million is set to be spent this year to ensure the delivery of the best health care and environmental services to the Vincentian public. Highlighting the Ministry's six strategic priorities for 2017, Minister Brown expressed his elation for the upcoming opening and full operation of the modern medical complex in Georgetown before year-end, which he noted will significantly increase the quality of SVG's health care services. And the significance of this is not lost upon the population of this country. Because that facility would serve several useful purposes. And one of those useful purposes is the fact that it will be able to provide dialysis services to the residents, to the population. And there is a crying need for dialysis. I've made the point before on, on other occasions that the cost of this treatment outside of the realm of the public sector is prohibitive. It's high, unsustainably high, unaffordably high. And I think that what is going to happen in terms of this modern medical complex this year is vital as far as our march towards universal access to health care and universal health coverage in this the health minister added that persons will also see the opening of two modern polyclinics in addition to the ongoing developmental work being undertaken at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. The government continues to go from strength to strength. We're going to open a polyclinic in Maribor and we're going to open one in Bukamet. Yes. In addition to the fact that we have the modern medical complex coming on stream, Mr. Speaker. So, and in addition to the fact that we have ongoing work where development is concerned at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. In that very soon we will expect to be unveiled a new operating theatre, recovery room and intensive care unit. And at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital, too, Mr. Speaker, we will have a brand new female surgical ward so we can reduce some of the congestion of the wards and provide better conditions in which these individuals are going to be able to receive the medical treatment at the hospital. And it's not only about building wards, it's also about providing facilities like a kitchen, which would be better for the use of those who are employed at the hospital. It is a holistic view and a holistic approach that we are taking to all things held by this. Senator Brown further outlined that the government intends to make greater efforts in rolling out national health insurance services. Full business of fees and revenue and how we sustain and manage things in respect of our health services and environmental services too is brought into sharp focus in a period such as this, Mr. Speaker, when we are contemplating, in fact it's beyond contemplation, when we are moving forward with our plans in relation to national health insurance. And one of the things that we look forward to in this upcoming year is for us to make decisive progress in respect of national health insurance and that will have a bearing on several different themes that are relevant to the ministry. Member of Parliament for West Kingstown, Daniel Cummings, has described the administrative functioning of the Ministry of Health as a disgrace. In his contribution to the 2017 budget estimates on Monday, Cummings, the Shadow Minister of Health for the Opposition, requested a copy of a report on the overall health sector operations. Cummings alleged that, that hospital ambulances are being used to transport junior staff workers and called on management to look into this and other matters. These things really ought not to happen. Somebody needs to put a foot down and make sure no one no point that they're now looking to find a management plan when we have to get them our hospital. Apparently there's not one. Or they don't understand what a management plan is. Anybody responsible for an institution that will allow this to happen 
should hang their head in shame. They said, it's a disgrace. Mr. Speaker, health is not something that we should play politics with. I speak very passionate about it because I, I experience these things when I go there. A strategic budget reform initiative, which started in 2016, will be fully rolled out in all the ministries and departments for 2017. So says Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gansams, who says there will be output and outcome indicators to measure work produced and the impact these deliverables, among other initiatives, has on the new performance report program. He revealed that 83 new jobs have been created to assist in greater functionality within the public sector. The main objectives of this reform are to strengthen further the linkages between the government's strategic policy priorities and the budget, improve performance management and reporting by sharpening the focus of the measurement and delivery of results and streamlining the program structures of ministries and departments to reflect better the core functions of each portfolio. To this end, honorable members will note the following as they peruse the 2017 estimates. A. The result indicators have been replaced by strategic priorities and key program strategies or activities. The strategic priorities are intended to highlight the most important transformative initiatives of the overall ministry, while the key program strategies or activities focus on the headline activities at the program level. These indicators are presented at the beginning of each ministry or department in the estimates. Vincentians must be grateful to countries that have made contributions towards the construction of the Argyle International Airport. That's according to CEO of the International Airport Development Company, the IADC, Dr. Rudy Matthias, as he spoke on a local radio program last Sunday discussing issues relating to the opening of the Argyle International Airport. Dr. Matthias noted that the responsibility of building the Argyle International Airport falls on all Vincentians, and where other countries have contributed financially, gratitude must be shown. This is our airport. We are the ones who are supposed to build it. And it is sad sometimes when you hear some commentary about the members of the coalition of the willing and how much they gave or how much they did not give. And you wonder sometimes the way some Vincentians speak is as though somebody owes us a living, somebody owes us, or there is a responsibility on the part of any country to help us build an airport. Trinidad has no obligation at all to give us 10 million US dollars as a grant. They gave us and we ought to be grateful. And we have to recognize that whatever we got from Venezuela as a grant or a soft loan, we ought to be grateful to the people and the government of Venezuela. So even when we plan and even when they promise, we have to be grateful for what we eventually got from them. It's important that we made that point because nobody owes us an airport. Speaking on the relocation of persons from the Argyle site to accommodate the construction of the Argyle Airport, Dr. Matthias stated that the IADC had done extensive work to ensure that the process was as smooth as possible and expressed gratitude to the persons who sacrificed their homes to allow for the airport to be built. Pay for transportation in the cases where they're going to transport their own stuff and to basically help them to set themselves up in their new homes. The way we related to the homeowners, I think that um, is the reason why we have maintained such a good relationship with them, even though they are now in perhaps what they might consider to be their second choice um, location, because they chose initially to go to Argyle clearly because they, they prefer to live at Argyle. And I am eternally grateful, and I am sure every Vincentian is eternally grateful to the sacrifices made by these homeowners to relocate from their, what they might have called a false choice living destination to someplace else, just to make us, um, make available to us the land for building of the Argan International Airport. Also speaking on the program as Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonzalez, 
who took the opportunity to dispel rumors surrounding alleged payments made to his wife for work done at the Argyle International Airport. Dr. Gonsalves stated that his wife, who is a skilled designer, shared her knowledge, time and expertise free of charge. Yeah, she has been a person who has lent her time, her expertise and so forth to advise on things and actually to source things and so forth. She did all that free. You know what malicious people are saying? Rudy, mm. that you paid her a million dollars. Jesus, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> that whole contract was a million dollars. Wow. Well, there's, not there's even one not, red cent. There's not, not, not even an iota of truth in that. We've never paid Not even out. one red cent. Not one dollar. And that is a fact. In fact, I'm telling you that when she was sent overseas to source things and so on, very often she took money out of her own pocket for, for incidentals. I know that. Yes, it must be. <laughs> because I pay the bill. <laughs> yeah. I know it. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines will officially open the Argyle International Airport on Tuesday, February 14th. This will be preceded by a military parade and flag raising ceremony on Monday, February 13th. The Agency for Public Information, the API, in collaboration with SVG TV and VC3, will bring live television coverage of the events locally. The events will also be broadcast to regional and international audiences via Temple Cable Television Network. The coverage will include a live panel with guest moderators, interviews, vox pops, as well as coverage of the arrival departure of flights on February 14th. As part of the media and promotional campaign leading up to the opening day on February 14th, the Agency for Public Information, in collaboration with the Office of the Prime Minister and Temple Cable Television Network, has teamed up to, to produce a series of programs entitled The Realization of a Dream, the coming on stream of the Argyle International Airport. The first program will feature Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez on the realization of his dream to build an international airport in SVG. This will be televised on Temple and local television stations commencing today, Tuesday, January 31st. Returning Nationals SVG, the single largest local contributor to the Argyle International Airport Contributory Fund, on Monday made its final contribution towards the development of the project and other related facilities. The group, which comprises Vincentians who once lived in the diaspora but have returned home, met at the AIA's conference room on Monday to present their final check for 15,000 EC dollars, to patron of the AIA Contributory Fund, His Excellency Governor General Sir Frederick Ballantyne. This brings their contribution to a grand total of 275,000 EC dollars. Speaking at the handing over ceremony, President of Returning Nationals SVG, Nayoka Clowden, said they are happy to have given their support to the project and thanked the general public and many organizations who assisted them in their venture over the years. CEO of the International Airport Development Company, Dr. Rudy Matthias, commended the group for their hard work in raising funds for the project. He also thanked them for their decision to make available 150,000 EC dollars to the Cayo village. Accepting the check, His Excellency the Governor General Sir Frederick Ballantyne said all Vincentians have a moral responsibility to build this country and must use whatever skill and ability they possess to make St. Vincent and the Grenadines a better place for all Vincentians to live. The outpouring of condolences by members of Parliament to the families and friends of the students of the Technical Division of the SVG Community College who lost their lives in a vehicular accident in Barbados on Sunday was heartfelt on Monday as each minister stood to express their sorrow about the tragic incident. This is really a sad thing. Um, I saw a, saw an invasion online in Manhood Commission. I also wanted to extend condolences to, to the family of the one uh, agent person in the accident who also died. Sometimes for the first time on their own. And you do so with always a fear 
that something terrible could happen. But you pray by the grace of God that the guardian angels will guide them and bring them back safely and sometimes it doesn't happen. And I feel so pained in my heart for that those families, Mr. Speaker. What of the disease, Mr. Speaker, I mean the baggage accidents on the boat with me and uh, she hears from chefs the Denny family and I like, have not been able to make contact with it quite unlikely. But I hope in the course of the day that that is done. And I commiserate not just for the family but the institution, the community college. The be remiss of me if I didn't um, stand to join Prime Minister. But that was that uh, other members of Parliament who have expressed their condolences to the families of Aziza Denny, Karen Padmore, and Danny Horn. Uh, they passed a tragic accident in Barbados. The Senator Deborah Charles just returned from a special assembly, assembly at the school. Uh, the ministry will continue to support the school, the students, and to support the parents as time goes on. A temporary network of seismic instruments has been recently installed here in SVG, which according to the UWI Seismic Research Center, will provide scientists with more information about volcanoes in the southern Lesser Antilles and bolster earthquake monitoring capacity. Seismic recording stations have been installed in Union Island, Canawan, Mustique, Beckway, and mainland St. Vincent. According to the UWI Seismic Research Center, the installation was part of the Volatiles in the Lesser Antilles project, which seeks to provide a better understanding of earthquakes and volcanic activity in the southern Lesser Antilles. Similar instruments are also expected to be deployed in St. Lucia and Grenada. The center said additional studies on the development of volcanism in this region are planned for May 2017 and that these exercises present a unique opportunity to advance scientific understanding of natural systems that have great potential to impact the societies of the southern Lesser Antilles. Persons here involved with emergency response are engaged in a six-day workshop designed to boost their capacity in relation to managing aircraft accidents and mass casualty events. The workshop is funded by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, and the Caribbean Health Disaster Risk Management Global Affairs Project, PANAD. Speaking at the opening ceremony of the simulation workshop on Monday, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Simon Kiza Beach said, although the participants may have at some point dealt with mass casualty incidents, it is always good to have refresher training to boost their capacity. We are going to be ramping up. After February 14, we are going to have to be able to manage mass casualty events where we can have over 150 case, um, casualties. That's a whole different ball game for us. And though we have learned, and I think we do very well with our current mass casualty management in terms of our eight patients, we need to know develop those skills we have learned before so that we can adequately, efficiently manage mass casualty events which could be, as we just said, greater than 150. How do we do that? We utilize the same basic principles that we know and have experience in and we build on that. Dr. Beach also expressed gratitude to the participants for taking the time out to be involved in the workshop, which she said is timely. We'd also want to thank you for coming and being here this morning. I, understand, I know that this is a very busy time in the response services, and for you to come and be willing to spend six days, basically, with us is a tremendous investment and um, sacrifice. I also want to thank you for coming at such late notice and we apologize, but I guarantee that this is going to be a very beneficial um, six days. Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, Nemo, Michelle Forbes, also considered the workshop a timely one and expressed confidence in its success. The way you handle an injured person can be a matter of life and death, and you will have a greater appreciation of the challenges that our health personnel face each day in prioritizing those who need health care. 
Additionally, the first responders at the airport to an emergency must be able to competently manage a mass casualty event until additional support arrives. As NEMO, we want to extend our appreciation and thanks to the Ministry of Health and PAHO for organizing this workshop. I know we have had some challenges in scheduling and repositioning staff, but I'm also confident that, we'll, that this workshop will be a success. Special thanks to our facilitators, Peter Burgess and Dr. Aline. Welcome again, Peter, to St. Vincent. I know we have met at similar courses a few years back when we were a bit younger and a few pounds, few pounds lighter. <laughs> so um, Peter is an excellent facilitator, I will tell you. Fun, but he will drive you hard. Vincentians will soon be able to vote for who or what they consider to be the best product or service provider available here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines through a People's Choice Awards initiative dubbed the Best in SVG campaign. The campaign is being hosted by Interactive Media Limited and Rebel Media. At a media launch on Monday, January 30th, Chief Executive Officer of Interactive Media Limited, Claire Kieser, outlined that the campaign, which has some 115 categories, is aimed at giving recognition to local entities and individuals for the services or products they provide to the Vincentian public. Noting that along with bragging rights, the winners of the campaign will be able to possess a valuable accolade, Kiza said that there are no criteria for any of the categories, as persons will vote for what he or she believes is SVG's best. And this sort of campaign is also very good for people who are new to, um, new to the community because we will have all of this online. We will be soon launching our Facebook page. People who are new to the community sometimes want to know who is the best florist? Where can I get somebody to um, do a really nice floral arrangement? And they, they really don't know where to turn, but they, they choose um, who the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines say is the best. So, but we're referring here to um, businesses, people who do it for um, commercial, commercially. You know, it doesn't have to be, as Tony mentioned, a restaurant in a fancy, building or anything like that. It could be somebody who operates, you know, from a small establishment, um, doesn't have to be a registered business, or even somebody who maybe delivers food, you know, somebody walks around the basket, but it must be somebody who sells the product or service. So we want to encourage the general public to participate and for businesses to encourage the clients and the customers also to participate. Highlighting that ballots, which will be made available from February 3rd, are only valid for one vote per category, Kiza urged persons to enter valid information when voting. Of the business or the person's real name, you may know somebody as Didi, and you know her real name may be Tishon Kane, but to allow BDO to be able to collate the votes correctly, it would make it a lot easier for them if you use the proper name under which the person is operating, or what is their official government name if they, they're not a business. For you to be eligible to win the $1,000 prize, we must have your real name because you'll be required to produce ID, a government-issued ID to claim the prize. So it is in, we want to ensure that the people who are voting for the different categories are real people, and we want to ensure that people don't vote more than once, as far as we can. We'll have the award ceremony and event towards the end of March. Um, we will begin to publicize the nature, date, and type of event um, just after the beginning of March. Speaking on behalf of the company responsible for the auditing of the campaign, Senior partner of the accounting firm BDO, Floyd Patterson, noted that the campaign will aid in the promotion of Vincentian products and services. Basically, what we'll be doing is ensuring the integrity of the information that is provided, that is above board, and that the scores that are tabulated from week to week with respect to the best of SVG that we report fairly who are the winners of, of this program. We are really looking forward to participating in this program because we think that it can only do good for St. Vincent and improve the quality of goods and services that are provided in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. 
I'd like to take this opportunity to thank those individuals, um, Clay, um, for coming up with such a brilliant idea in order to um, improve the quality. I think it would be an, a driver for improving the quality of goods and services throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines.